As a follow-up from our last video where we used the float rule to uh, modify layouts where we can have text and images, we're going to be applying um, the background class to add images to the specific tag as well as our banner just so we can get a little bit of repetition there. The images I've downloaded for today are from the website Pixneo. It's a useful website to get free images that don't have any commercial license to them. So um, don't have to worry about anyone saying you're using their images without their permission. So jumping back to here, I think the first one we can do is the banner. And I've already downloaded a few images that I thought looked nice that I'll use for this demonstration. But just to give you context, we have our banner class right here. I'm going to comment out this background rule rather than delete it just in case we ever wanted to reference back. And if you've forgotten, it's the same way with adding notes in HTML. In CSS, you just have to hold control backslash and it'll comment out that rule. So what we're going to do now is apply another background rule. And we, it needs to be considered a URL because it's going to be linked. Now that we have URL, we can browse. And in your site, you can go to images, the ones you downloaded. Don't forget to add the semicolon. And you can see we have a very, very large version of this. This is high quality. We obviously want this to fit in a little nicer. So this is where we can start leveraging some CSS rules that make this possible. What we need to do is use a rule called background dash size and we want to use cover. When we apply that rule, you'll see what it does is it makes the width the maximum the page could possibly be. And I'll just give you that in a little bit of context here. The width of the image is defined by the width of the page. So if I minimize this here, we can see that it's always going to maintain its aspect ratio, which is useful when making sites that need to be mobile friendly. It will always fit relatively nicely, and we can have an image in the background. And you can see one thing though, the text is a little hard to see. So there's a few ways of doing this, and just one way of doing this that's quite easy is in our banner rule we can do text dash shadow. And although this isn't always going to work perfectly, what you can do is just add a little bit of contrast between it. So three pixels to the right, three pixels to the left, or horizontal and vertical. Um, and then I'll do white. And then you just have a little bit of separation there. We could even apply uh, future rules, but just to give you a little bit of context of that, now at least when we do preview in Chrome, oh, let's just open that up. It just pops a little more so the text isn't lost in the picture. So we're going to apply that same process now to the div tag that we applied inside of our article. And if we scroll down, we can see we already have an article image uh, class rule available. If we just go ahead and press enter, and same as we did before, background, and we're going to do URL, browse, and I just picked a, just a general article image here, add a semicolon. And just like the one before where it was too high resolution to actually see the image, we are again going to do background dash size cover. And then when we go back and forth a few times, you see we have a much nicer version of it. And where this has also use when applying an image in a div as opposed to it's just pure form as an image tag, we can do things like this. 
Uh, we've done this rule in previous for the social media icon, but we can also do, for example, border radius. And if we did 20 pixels, save that. We can start modifying the image in a way that you don't have the flexibility to do when just using an image tag. So that's really it for adding images to the background. It's a pretty simple process. It's easy to do. And as you can see, when we preview your site, you can really help just make the overall look of it pop.